on Hecate's help desk, an additional question that you received, this one came through YouTube, I believe. Um, the question of, is this Hecate? Is this Hecate in my life? So this, again, this is like, I would say top five questions that I get asked a lot, at least a couple of times a week, if not more. Um, I'll get asked this very specific question, like I'm new to Hecate. I think this is Hecate. I'm not sure if it's Hecate. Also, what is going on? <laughs> so there's a, there's a lot to unpack in this question. And I know, Angie, that you had a similar experience, so. Yeah, definitely. It was, sorry, <laughs> you put me on the spot and I was not prepared for that. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> my mind went blank. Um, I did have an experience and, you know, uh, the, my first interaction with her was this, um, you know, she was sort of mentioned in passing in, in a vision that I had on a guided meditation at the end of a yoga class. And that's when I started searching and found her. And then I was like, oh my gosh, I think that's what's going on. And then what is this? And then I invited her in and then my life just sort of went, you know, like we talk about fault lines, right? And it was one of those fault lines, spiritual awakening and an upgrade. And it was amazing. So how do you answer that question when people ask you, is this Hecate? There is a lot. <sighs> It, there's also there's like this long answer and you know me Angie I could like talk for hours um, go over to the YouTube I do have Hecate's messages that video over there that I talk about this in um, so I, I strongly recommend watching that video for a longer explanation for a short explanation I am going to say for the most part trust that it is there are certain unlikely scenarios where it may not be the awakening of the sacred goddess within you that is, you know, that that's where the call comes from. The call comes from within. Um, and this is kind of a tricky, sticky thing to talk about because, of course, I don't want to, um, you know, sound like I'm prescribing, like how this is how you experience Akate. There are certain situations though, where it may not actually be Hecate, they are very, very rare. And that will, in those situations, I would say, it's often when we don't take the time to just listen to ourselves. You know, like it's like, so, you know, like, so it's like, um, Hecate is really popular right now and that's really cool so she may call you through her popularity but even if it's like your friends are into Hecate you think Hecate is calling you if you sit with yourself just to think like does this feel right to me yeah you know it's like when you meet someone and you just click yes right yeah. and it's like if you get that clicky feeling that this is right for you then it is right for you and if you don't get the clicky feeling that doesn't necessarily mean it's not right for you it means to sit with it a little bit longer um, and if you get the feeling like this is really interesting I'm going to study it further then just follow that there is Hecate because I know sometimes people are like afraid that it's not Hecate, that it's a malevolent spirit that's trying to trick them, for example. Mm -hmm. um, fundamentally, if, if it's Heca it seems like Hecate, it almost inevitably is Hecate. It is that w awakening of the sacred witch fire within you that is calling you. And sitting with it for a little bit, just to say, like, does this feel, am I getting this clicking feeling? Does it feel right? Do I feel kindled within by this? Do I feel pulled and compelled to become more? Um, and because universally, the experience of that awakening of the sacred witch fire within, as we light that up, it illuminates our shadows, it illuminates our truth, and 
it, and it's like the torch is once it's lit within us, it's like those torches get and end up in our hands. Yeah. And it's like, we become like that fierce pursuer of our own truth and often um, shining for others as well. So it is, you know, so don't rush in, um, but prepare, be, be ready. Because as you will kindle that fire, you will become stronger, more healed, and just listen to your own, like that own sacredness that's coming from within you. So it's really interesting, Cindy, as you talk about this, because so much of what we talk about within the coven, and especially within um, the Mystai, the course on, on modern Hecatean witchcraft, um, is, to, is personal sovereignty to be your own witch and to own that. And so I really love what you're saying here is that even at the very, very beginning, if you think that it's Hecate's calling you, there is nobody else who can tell you who it is other than yourself. I think that's so true. And so it's difficult for me to answer that question when someone contacts me and they say, is this Hecate? And my question is, ine I inevitably end up playing the psychologist and answering the question with a question. Uh, <laughs> and I'm saying, does it feel like Hecate to you? Mm -hmm. Because that's what matters the most. And I understand that this can be intimidating. Oftentimes, you know, uh, practitioners will feel like well why would she choose me yeah. and it, and it's like she chose you when the universe was created you know she chose you so long before there was such a thing as chronological time right so it's even such a thing as you yes today exactly there before there was a you you were chosen before there was time this moment arrived and it, it's always been within you and that's why i emphasize so much that it is about awakening from within it's the opening of the inner temple no, temple it's that witch fire that's coming to light and how we kindle it that is hecate it's you know she's not um you know, and, and I don't want to sound like harsh, but she's not a goddess on a shelf somewhere that you just kind of rub once in a while and do a ritual to. Hecate is the primal force of magic, medicine, and mystery. So that sort of goes into another question that you had around how sometimes, um, even if you're like, okay, this is Hecate, um, she's not necessarily like 1-900 dial a goddess, right? You don't press a few buttons on a vending machine and out pops Hecate. She's not necessarily a goddess that is going to be um, available on demand whenever you decide, hey, I want you. I think this is such an interesting topic, and we could talk about this for hours, right? Um, but this is also something, so most practitioners, when they are first called or they first become aware of, you know, the Hecate within, whether she calls them or they you know they pursue that most of them feel humbled and gracious and are just really kind of proud that they're awakening to this power within what happens once in a while though is that someone is really in a fix in their lives and it's like oh well i want to dial up hecate because i need a new job or for me personally when I first really started to deepen my relationship with Hecate, I was like, on fuck my life. Right. You know, help me. I am here sincerely because my life is a mess. Maybe not outwardly, but inwardly, my life is a mess. And I would like you to on fuck my life. And here's, um, and here's what I'm willing to do. And I think that's the thing that is the difference that you know she's not a goddess on a shelf where you press the buttons you do the ritual and it's like okay i lit the candle button i burned the inset button uh i said the words button now where is she i press the buttons right um and it's because again to get into this aspect of what we're really doing is awakening our own power that if we're put it pressing the buttons and expecting someone else to show up and do the work for us, then that's kind of like the complete opposite of being a witch and standing in our own power. Right. 
Um, however, I'm not picking on people who think that way because oftentimes that's like the NISA, that's the threshold where we have that moment of realization of just how spiritually programmed that we've been and how disempowered society has made us feel that, you know, we've been trained and conditioned like those dogs in Pavlov's lab, that if we do these things, we will be granted these boons. Right. And that we don't have the power to give ourselves favor, only something else, something exterior, something higher can give us the, give us those things. Right. So, you know, we can take that moment. It's like, oh yeah, I was totally treating Hecate like a vending machine and be like, oh, I understand that that's because I have been so conditioned to see that I'm not powerful. So I am going to make that choice now. Again, the choice of the Nissa, the threshold mm -hmm. that I am going to develop a course of action for solving my problem. And then I am going to petition Hecate to help me demonstrating to her as offering what I am prepared to and doing. Right. Um, but it's a huge, massive step to go from being so conditioned that we are not powerful, that we are corrupt, right? Um, and that only by doing certain things a certain way, pressing those damn buttons on the spiritual vending machine, then some God somewhere is going to give us favor. It's hugely to go from that kind of super programmed, disempowered place to the place of being the sovereign, which priestess, priest, or other, whatever you identify with. Um, and as we move towards that, then that's when the results really start to happen. And I mean, you can testify to that, Angie, like that how your life has changed in the past two years since you showed up in it. Amazing. So yeah, she showed up as a random a sort of side note in a, at least what I thought was a side note in, in that yoga journey thing that I did. And then um, at the time I was this broken hearted grad student pursuing, uh, I didn't know what, uh, but knowing that I needed something else. And uh, I started the midwife course and started working really, really closely with her. And by, you know, being able to trust myself to do the things that she was proposing or nudging me toward, um, which were really scary things. They were things like, why don't you start your own business? And why don't you start reading cards, tarot cards for people? And why don't you maybe not go back to grad school because your uh, skills are needed elsewhere? Um, these, these things that felt really, really scary, but I knew that she was nudging me in those directions because I was ready for it because I had the power to make it happen and to work with it. And once you tell her, yes, I, I'm going to do this. I am willing to, to do and, and jump on board with all of these things. At that point, it has just been right in the wave. You know, it's been amazing to watch everything come together uh, to where I am today, happily married, living in Portland, Oregon and working as a professional full-time witch. It's amazing. Take those keys. Yes, she offers them to you. She just expects you to use them. Expects you to use them. Um, but the choice is always yours. And that's why free will is so vital to, an, uh, to developing a relationship with Hecate. So is this Hecate? She will always leave space for you to decide on your own whether or not you want those keys. Yes. So her presence, of course, can be overwhelming. Yes, I in the chat, because we have some folks who are live with us uh, chatting on the side, um, we had someone who said, for me, she did everything but hit me over the head because I kept questioning if it was really her. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it can be very loud and powerful sometimes. Um, and also something else I wanted to briefly touch upon that's coming up in the live chat is the issue of Hecate is very, being seen as uh, dark or frightening or scary. And I want to, we'll finish this uh, segment of the help desk talking about this. Okay, so I've already talked about how we return, we remember, we reconnect to our eternal witch flame that's always been part of who we are. That is the experience of Hecate. Hecate will nudge us and push us and sometimes push us downstairs or clobber us over the head. Um, 
right, to do all these things to get our attention because we need to be snapped out of the mundane. We need to be so snapped out of our false self. Why I really put, this is what I know to be true when it comes to how people will say, well, she's a dark goddess, she's a scary goddess. It is precisely because Hecate is so empowering mm -hmm. and so fierce and what returning to Hecate does. And again, Hecate, this is not, um, how to say this, it's not like, everyone in the planet <laughs> is you know like called in a, this way it's not about convincing other people to this path it's like you either have this within you or you don't i fundamentally believe that but to others because this represents primal power it represents standing on your own it represents healing and she represents not bowing down to uh the status quo or the system that that can be really dark, frightening, and scary for people who seek to uphold the system. <laughs> the other thing, of course, is that, you know, there are those who fear their own power. So yeah. if we fear Hecate, what we are really fearing is our own psyches. Yes, absolutely. We're feeling our own souls and our own darkness. We all have a shadow. Yes. We all have destructive capabilities within us. Yes. And, you know, to deny Hecate and to say like, oh, Hecate is too scary, or I won't work with Hecate as Brimo, or those things. Um, as you deepen this understanding that this is of you and not something removed from you, that to do these things becomes more empowering and less terrifying, still intimidating, still fierce. Um, yeah. You know, but it's different, but it's like, as we understand our own darkness, our own abilities to be the destroyer, the times that we are toxic in our own lives, um, that, that the fear of Hecate naturally falls away because we're understanding our own darkness and we're moving towards integration. And that's why I think so many people who are, who will say things like Hecate is too dark and she's too this, it's like, they're really just afraid of their own power. They're afraid of themselves. They're afraid of their own psyche. Yes. Not yeah. our concern. She may be in the dark, but she's, you know, she's the torchbearer. She's bringing light to it. She's so incredibly powerful to help us bring light to our own shadows. It's amazing. It okay. is amazing. All right. So thank you for that. We've got a quick, so thank you. Uh, may Hecate bless you.